Okay, let's talk about divide curve and divide length. So these are two very similar components. Um, and let's talk about when we would use one of them versus the other one. And I'll also, I'm gonna throw in another, a little trick here that you can use uh, for a case um, that may not be totally obvious, you know, how, you, how you'd solve this problem, okay? But first, for context, I just have to tell you what, what project this is. Basically, what we're working on is Larkin Street Substation Expansion by TEF Design. This is a case study that I used. I just found this uh, design. I don't. I didn't have any part in the design of it. I just found this and I decided to make a little case study and uh, create the gra a Grasshopper script to emulate this design. And if you want to check that out, you can see that in a separate video. Okay. Um, so what are we talking about here? We have di divide curve and divide length. So what is the difference between these and what are some tricks that we can use to always get the type of division that we're looking for? First, I'm going to start with a simple example and then we'll look at the project itself, okay? So we have to input a curve and then we have to input uh, a length, uh, okay? And let's also use divide curve. Look at some of the differences here. So if we put 100 into both of our inputs, we're going to get totally different results, obviously. So what divide curve is doing is it's dividing this curve into uh, equally uh, into the, this number of segments. So if we have, want three segments, we get three segments equally distributed along that curve. Okay, pretty pretty simple. And the key thing is that we don't know how long these segments are. We just know how many number of segments that we want, right? And if we use divide length. It's a very different uh, case. Divide length is dividing into an unknown number of segments, but our our the length of each segment is known. Okay, so you can see here right now we have 1,000 millimeter segments. So this is like a six meter long line, and our segments are 1,000 millimeters in size. Okay, but the key thing here is that. Um, the uh, the segments are not equally distributed along this curve because we're always going to end up with a, a problem at the end of our curve. Now, maybe this is not a problem because maybe if if you knew you absolutely needed to have these segments to be this size, then this is totally fine. This is totally what you want. So these are the main these are the main uh, characteristics of these two components, right? And so this can be used if you know exactly this, this, the length of this segment. But uh, let's look at a, a condition where neither of these components by themselves are going to get us the result that we're looking for. Okay, so let's head over to our project. So as you can see in our in our rendering here, you can see this patterning, right? These these kind of ribs on the on these panels that are creating our shadow play. Um, basically, what I wanted to do is that on the short end of the panel at the bottom, I I want the spacing of these of this um, segment to hold on. I want the spacing of this segment to of uh, these segments to be uh, almost the same uh, in length, but I want them to be equally distributed across the curve. Okay, so if you catch what I said there, it's a little bit of a contradiction because, as we learned when we were looking at these two components, we can't have we can't both have the length of our segments defined, and we can't have them equally distributed. Right, so divide curve equally distributes those segments, but the divide length. Uh, is how we determine the exact length of the segments, but they're not equally distributed. So how do we take care of that? Like I said, at the bottom, I know that I have a parameter for uh, the length, the the size of our segments, and I want them to be equally distributed. Well, let's. Uh, there's a very simple solution uh, for how we can do this. Okay, let's take a look at what that is. So instead of using divide length, uh, I'm going to take this number slider that's defining the length of our segments, and I'm going to do I'm going to do a little trick with this okay so we're going to delete the number of curves we're not going to use this divide length component 
I'm going to take, this is the length that I want my segments and I want them to be equally distributed. But what I know is I have to compromise on the exact length of segments. And all I can do is get segments that are as close as possible. Okay. So this is what I can do. I can go divide length or I can go to the division component. Uh, first I have to measure the length of my curve and then I can divide the length of my curve by the length of my segments. Okay. And I'm going to get a number and that means this is basically telling us that if you want, if your curve is this long and you want segments this long, then you're going to get 11.6 segments, which is what we're getting out of this component, right? We're getting 11.6. That's why we have a partial segment at the end. So we can't have that. We don't want that because uh, that doesn't work in our design. What we want is the closest possible number to that number. So obviously we use the round component. We plug that in and we can use nearest or you can use floor or ceiling. It's up to you depending on the context. I'll just use nearest in this example. So nearest is 12. So I'll plug that into divide curve. And now we have, uh, now we have 12 equally distributed, um, segments, but it's very, very close to this number. So if I change this number, it's going to always give me, uh, the segments are going to be equally distributed, but, um, they will also be uh, close to this this length of segment, okay? And that's the strategy we used up here. I'm using a spacing of 100. It's taking, uh, and then the key thing here is that each length, the length of each curve is different. If you look, right? Um, let me hide some of this so you can see it a bit better. The length of each curve is actually totally different, even though I still want the same length of segments for each curve. So I couldn't put in, uh, the number of segments, I couldn't put in a single number because then like the number of segments, this would be too close together and this, and you know, this one would be too spaced apart and this one would be too spaced apart. Right? So if I use this, uh, this strategy, it's measuring all of my curves and, and figuring out what the approximately how many, uh, steps we need to get, or how many steps we need to get approximately this length of segment. And that's how we're ending up with this result. And that's why if you look at the short end of each one of these, you know, uh, quadrilaterals, uh, the spacing of this is very consistent. Okay. Right. No matter how, like between this one and this one, the spacing, spacing of these are very, is very consistent, even though on the large end, the spacing is not consistent, but, but these are, as far as I could tell from the design, it looked like it was defined by the spacing at the short end of the, of these quadrilaterals. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So, um, that's, that's my tip for, for this video. Hope, uh, you learned something and, uh, I'll see you in the next video.